A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son 
as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Dominus Fabiscum, et cum spiritum tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem, Gloria Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if I do if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. Verbum Domini. Here in the United States, we honor especially our mothers on this Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are present here. I know there are some in our choir as well. To my own dear mother back in Iowa, to our spiritual mothers, we have some of them here as well. We think of Mother Angelica being a spiritual mother in many ways to, to all of us. 
to our Blessed Mother, whom we will have the May crowning today with three lovely young ladies, Janae and Colette and Therese, will assist in the crowning of Our Lady in this May crowning day. We think of our Mother, the Church, which has bought, brought us to spiritual rebirth, which continues to nourish us through the sacraments and to bring us to eternal life. So it's a day when we rightly do honor our mothers, our dear mothers in so many ways, both in our physical life and our spiritual life, that these dear women have assisted us in so many ways in becoming the people that we have become. Please God, better for it. I was recently back home helping me my mother with a couple of projects. And I learned of my boyhood friend who lived in the farm next to ours, had been diagnosed with a terminal illness. I hadn't really talked to him since we left the farm many years ago. So I called him and I said, you know, would you like to be anointed? So yes, he said, come on, come on right over. So I went over there and I was delighted when I came to his house, which I'd never been to, to see a beautiful statue of Our Lady there right next to the front door. So I knew he and his wife and his family were people of faith. And so after we talked about some of the mischief we'd gotten into as boys, I anointed him and I said to him a couple of things. He's going through some different treatments, but ultimately it's expected, please God, there'll be a miracle that it would be terminal. But I said, you know, there are two promises especially that the Lord has given us that are especially consoling to us all throughout our lives, two promises. And the one promise is that he will be with us all days until the end of the world. He says, you're gonna have trouble, but have courage, I've overcome the world. So indeed, we know we have trouble. Troubles sometimes seem overwhelming but he's with us. You'll have trouble, but have courage. Have courage. I've overcome the world. Behold, I am with you all days until the end of the world. So we're not facing those troubles alone. We're not struggling just with our own, in our own minds perhaps, abandonment and just being so alone. No, we're not. That he remains with us all days until the end of the world. And the other promise, and this was the gospel of that day that I anointed, uh, anointed him, was that in the Father's house there are many dwelling places. Other, and I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you also may be. And I will come to take you with me. And I'd like you to think about that today. Think of the Lord preparing a place for you. The Lord's thinking of you. He's thinking of you with love. And he's preparing this place, wonderful place, far beyond any delights this world would have to offer. And he's thinking of you. He's loving you now, actively. That's why I especially like the new translation that we have of today's reading from John chapter 15. Formerly it had said, as a father has loved me, past tense, so I have loved you, past tense. Well, that's true. And we are celebrating his passion, death, and resurrection, that he loved us. But I like now that it's in the present tense. As a father loves me, so I also love you. Present 
tense, active. Not just something that occurred in the past, but it's active now. He's preparing a place for us now. That's such a beautiful thought, a consoling thought in this Easter season to think of that. And then he goes on to say that he wants his joy to be in us and our joy to be complete. So joy, St. Francis understood, is not something that we can ever lose if it's genuine within us. No matter what happens in this life, our joy is real, it's deep. You know, and it's said that children are attracted to joyful people. They don't go to a sourpuss, <laughs> someone who is downcast all the time. We're just kind of living under the burden, but someone who has this joy that radiates in their face, which is a spark of eternity. And this is one of the reasons people were attracted to Jesus, I'm sure. Because he says, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you. And your joy might be complete. You see, if we know and we have this security in his love that he loves us, present tense, actively, now, first of all, before we do anything. If we have our security in that truth, and it is a truth, then there's a joy that nothing can take away from us, ever, no matter what happens. Even if we're diagnosed with a terminal illness, we know that that joy is everlasting, that even now he is preparing a place for us so that we may be with him and he will take us one day to be with him. Today's Magnificat had a beautiful meditation of Venerable Cardinal von Tuan. You know him, he was in a prison in the communist Vietnam for 13 years. He gave the spiritual exercises to the Pope in the year 2000. He has this beautiful insight of a phrase that's in today's gospel and often in John chapter 15, where Jesus says, remain in my love. What Cardinal Von Tuan says about this is that it, re it reveals his desire to have a permanent communion with us. Remain. Remain in my love. Don't depart from that love by turning towards sin. Don't depart in despair or anxiety. Although we may feel those temptations at times, remain in my love. Have your security there. Know that I love you actively, present tense, now. And later on in today's first reading, we had 1 John chapter 4. And later on in verse 19, St. John says, we love because he first loved us. So where did we have the power? Where did we learn how to love? Well, often it was from our dear mothers, whom we honor today, but where did they get that love? Why did they look at us with tenderness? Why did they make sacrifices for us? Because their love, their, their love, came from his. He formed their hearts to reveal his love to us through them. And even if you didn't have the best of mothers, or maybe tragically you lost your mother in an early life, know that even then you have the dearest and most precious of mothers. I always say that God fills in the gaps. Whatever's missing in our lives, if we didn't have the perfect childhood or upbringing or whatever that we really longed for and needed, God fills in the gaps in an even greater way. He gives us a sweet spiritual mother. Behold your mother, whom we have this May crowning today. Remain in my love. Remain in my love. In today's first reading, we have Acts chapter 10. 
And I'd encourage you to read the whole chapter to get more details of what happened here. Because here you have this centurion. So he's a Roman soldier. He's in charge of a hundred soldiers. And yet we're told in the Acts of the Apostles that he was a devout man, that he prayed continually, he gave alms generously, that he and his whole household were God-fearing. And then it was at 3 p.m. one day, the hour of mercy, that an angel appears to him and says, send for Simon, who's in this house near the sea. And so he does so. And Simon has that vision of the unclean animals. And it's revealed to him that no one is unclean or common, but all, as we heard today, that he says, in truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation who fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. And what happens is Peter's preaching, and you can read his whole sermon. It's a good way to see, well, what was the preaching like in the early church? Well, here we have an example in Acts chapter 10. We only have just a small portion of what he said. But he gave them the basic truths of the gospel. He said that Jesus went about doing good, healing those oppressed by the devil, that he was put to death on the cross, that God raised him on the third day, and we ate and drank with him. And he commanded us to preach and testify he is the one appointed to be the judge of the living and the dead, and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. That's the basic gospel message. That's what we believe in, and we receive forgiveness of sins. We have life in him. We know that as this vestment that I chose that was generously given to the friars, that his heart is full of all of his divine love and human love for us. He loves us active, actively, present tense, now, first of all, before we respond. And what do we hear? The circumcised believers, this is Acts chapter 10, would accompany Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have poured, been poured out on the Gentiles also. So they had in their mindset, no, God just has a particular love for a particular people. Well, he chose a particular people, true. But it was only so that he might bring this message of salvation to the whole world. And so oftentimes our own vision of who God is and how expansive his love is, is confined to our own limited sense of things. And they were astounded. Why? Because the Holy Spirit comes on them and they hadn't observed the Mosaic law. And yet God had this, this desire to let his Holy Spirit fall on them. And it was manifested in the speaking of tongues and glorifying God. And they were baptized. So realize that his love is far more expansive than we could ever imagine. That even the most destitute person, that person that we may conclude is just so far beyond hope or salvation, that he loves him with this tender love. He calls us when we may recognize someone who is far from God to be an intercessor for them, to be in some way, however the Lord wants to use us to be an instrument. God is full of surprises. They didn't expect that this is what would happen. And yet the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And who had Cornelius brought in to his house? All of his household. He had invited his relatives and his closest friends. And they were all there. His love is more than we can ever imagine. So my dear people, let us rejoice in this Easter season and let us be comforted in the words of today's gospel that he loves us, present tense, actively, that he remains with us. We will have trouble in this world, it is true, but we're to have courage 
We're not just to look at the trouble and be overwhelmed by the trouble. We're to have courage. We have to have security that he loves us, present tense, actively, now, first of all. He remains with us all days until the end of the world in a very profound way in the Holy Eucharist. And that even now he is preparing a place for you, a place for me. What a comforting thought that is. A place beyond our imagining, which would be the full manifestation, revelation of his love for us uniquely. Love is repaid by love alone. So let us, dear people, whatever days may remain to any of us, let's love him daily. Let us love one another as he has loved us. This I command you, love one another.